Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I knew it. <laughs> to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. Order, please. Um, Madam Clerk, I understand we have regrets from Councillor Grant, who's ill this evening. Thank you. Um, Council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Thank you. Would uh, a mover and seconder like to give us a motion to proceed into Committee of the Whole? Councillor Giddings and Councillor Kahn, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? We are now resolved into Committee of the Whole, which allows us um, a relaxed environment around our, a relaxed rule environment to uh, assist council in gaining information from the public about the items that we're gonna consider tonight. Council, the first item is the consent item. Number one, the demolition process report from the building services department. Councilor Kahn moves the consent item. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed, that is adopted. And, uh, or received, I'm sorry. There are no confidential consent items. And now we come to our public hearing items. And for the benefit of the public, let me read the following obligatory uh, statement. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submission to the town of Oakville in respect of a proposed official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and or plan of subdivision or condominium, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of town council to the Ontario Municipal Board and may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Municipal Board unless in the opinion of the board there are reasonable grounds to do so. And uh, our first public hearing item tonight is the public meeting report on the zoning bylaw amendment for 260 Brawny Road. And the nature of this public hearing is to receive information from the public that um, the public would like uh, staff and council to take into account when we um, get later on, and not at this meeting, to a decision on the matter. So this is a public consultation input session rather than a decision-making session. And if uh, everyone will give their attention to the podium, Paul, will you uh, start us? Thank you, Mayor Burden and members of council. Uh, this is the statutory public meeting related to a zoning bylaw amendment, draft plan of subdivision, and draft plan of condominium submitted by 1066834 Ontario Limited to permit seven detached dwellings on an existing and expanded condominium road. The report can be found on page 7 to 20 of tonight's agenda. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to obtain public input related to this application. No recommendation on the application is proposed tonight. Uh, staff will return in the future following with a comprehensive review of the application with a recommendation report. The subject lands are located on the west side of Brawny Road, south of Bridgeside Lane. The lands are part of a residential neighborhood and surrounded by low density residential uses. The lands are currently occupied by one single attached dwelling. The applicant is proposing to subdivide and rezone the subject lands to permit seven detached dwellings which front onto an expanded private road. In the livable Oakville plan, the site is designated low density residential. Section 11.1.5 of the plan provides that development on private roads shall be discouraged. Where it is demonstrated that a public road is not warranted to the satisfaction of the town, development through plans of condominium on private roads may be permitted, provided all required services are appropriately accommodated and all applicable policies of this plan are satisfied. In addition, policies related to maintaining and protecting existing neighborhood character are applicable, including section 11.1.9 of the Livable Oakville Plan. The subject lands are zoned R02. The applicant proposes to rezone the lands to a site-specific R12 zone to permit the development of seven detached dwelling units. The proposed seven lots would provide a minimum lot area of 435 square meters and frontage of 13 meters. A public information meeting was held on October 8, 2013, where 13 members of the public were in attendance. 
A complete analysis of the application will be undertaken and includes a review of the following matters which have been identified to date. Conformity with applicable policy, impact and integration of the proposed development on adjoining properties, maintenance and protection of the existing neighborhood character, development on a private road, lotting pattern and proposed density of development, traffic and on-site parking and adequate turning movements, tree preservation and noise mitigation measures. Comments received at this public meeting will also be considered as part of the comprehensive review. In conclusion, Your Worship, staff put forth the following recommendation as shown for Council's consideration. Once again, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to obtain further public comment. The applicant remains in technical review. Staff will return to Council in the future with rec recommendation report. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Council, do you have any questions? Oh, there's a question or two. Let's start at the end. Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sure Ro Councillor Robinson, myself, have the same questions. Um, under RO2 zoning, how many houses can you build as of right? Um, through you, Your Worship, uh, it would be between two to three houses, assuming they could front on the uh, private condominium road. Thank you. I'll leave the rest for Councillor Robinson. Councillor Robinson. Well, I think that, I think Councillor Johnson was correct, but I'd just like to, uh, you know, emphasize this a little bit more. Does that mean then that under the current Livable Oakville official plan and the current zoning, that the number of homes that could be built would be someplace between two and three? Is that what you just confirmed? Uh, through your worship, uh, I just confirmed through the existing zoning only, that's what would be permitted as of right, assuming the lots were able to front onto the private condominium road, right. given the lot frontage and lot area requirements. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? Are there any registered delegations, Madam Clerk? Uh, no, we have no registered. Council, I'll call your attention to the letter you will have received on your desk this evening from uh, um, two residents of nearby Ridge Size Lane. And I'll ask, are there any members of the public with information for Council on this matter? Uh, I'll ask again, once, twice. I see somebody thinking he might stand up. Okay. Um, all right, I don't see any members of the public with information for the committee. Uh, does the applicant wish to make any representations at this time? Please introduce yourself and, and uh, we look forward to your information. Thank you, Mayor Burton. My name is Franco Romano. I'm a registered professional planner and I'm helping the owner proceed through the process. So I was in attendance along with the uh, counselors and planning staff at the uh, community meeting where uh, the 13 residents attended. Uh, my review of the official plan and zoning bylaw come to a different number of lots uh, that could be uh, provided for on the lands as of right. If I draw your attention to the agenda, page 13, the second last <coughs> part of, the, of that page you'll see the, just above the heading zoning bylaw. So that's, there, these are extracts from the official plan that are above the zoning bylaw. Section 11.2.2 .2 says that a density of up to 29 dwelling units per site hectare may be permitted in areas designated low density residential, residential low density. The site is 0 0.35 hectares. So that's just under an acre. At 0 0.35 hectares, that would amount to, at 29 units per, hec per hectare, that would amount to 10 units. So that's the official plan. In terms of the zoning bylaw, if we turn the page to page 14, I'm going to give you two statistics for the zoning bylaw, or sets of statistics. You'll see that the site is zoned R02 or RO2, 
that RO2 has two performance standards relating to lot size. It has a lot frontage requirement of 22 meters. If we take the length adjacent to the existing condominium driveway of 104.76 meters divided by 22, that gives you 4.65 lots. If we take the lot area requirement under the RO2 zone, zoning bylaw, which is 836 square meters, that gives us four lots. So under the existing zoning, we have in between four and four and a half lots that could be permitted as of right. Under the R12, which is the zone immediately to the north, and you'll see that on that zoning map again, it applies to the Ridgeside Lane lands, it's a cul-de-sac just to the north. That R12 zone zoning bylaw allows for a minimum lot frontage of 12 meters. The proposal is for 13 meter lot frontages. The R12 zone category also allows for minimum lot areas of 360 square meters. And the proposal has 435 square meters. So in terms of the zoning context, if we take the existing zoning, four to four and a half lots, if we take the zoning immediately to the lands to the north, which is a more contemporary subdivision in the area, we have on the subject site, lot frontages and lot areas that exceed the physical character immediately to the north, abutting to the north. And if we have the livable Oakville official plan, it allows 10 units. So the proposal is at seven just for factual purposes. Thank you for that. Councillor Robinson might like to question you. Thank you, Your Worship. Mr. Romano, just a question. The, the, the caption zoning bylaw at the bottom of page 13 reads, the town's underlining zoning bylaw zones the subject lands as RO2, which does not permit the proposed development. And I'm just wondering how you feel about that statement. I'm going to ask our staff to talk about that as well, but I'm just wondering how you feel about that. Well, it's a, it's a general statement, which yeah. is accurate in its generality, because the existing zoning only allows between four and a four and a half lots, and the proposal is seven lots. Right. That's why there's an application for a rezoning in order to implement right. the, uh, the livable uh, Oakville official plan, which allows 10. Uh, but, but you do agree then that the current zoning doesn't allow the seven lots. The proposed development. Seven lots, yeah. The, the proposed development. Does seven, it does not allow seven lots. Right. It allows detached residential, and the existing zoning allows in between four and four and a half lots. Well, we heard between two. Which is more than the one that's there today. We were told between two and three, actually. But anyway, thank you, Worship. Thank you, Councillor. Um, thank you, sir, for your information. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. Council, since we have no other information on this item to receive, I wonder if we could look for a motion to receive the public's information. Councillor Robinson, thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Now we're going to the public meeting report for the uh, zoning bylaw amendment at 1055 and 1065 McCraney. And again, this is the same uh, procedure. We're receiving information, not making a decision looking for the information that will help staff create a recommendation for council at a later date. And if you give your attention again to the planning staff, we will be guided again. Thank you, Mayor Berta and members of council. Uh, this is the statutory public meeting related to a town initiated zoning bylaw amendment to recognize the existing open space use on the northern portion of the site and rezone the eastern portion of the site to permit a new secondary school. Uh, the report can be found on page 21 to 36 of tonight's agenda. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to obtain any public input related to this application. No recommendation on the application is proposed tonight. The subject lands are located north of McCraney Street East, east of Six Line. The subject lands are occupied by a school and surrounding land uses include open space to the north and east, a secondary school to the south, and residential to the west. 
In 2010, the Halton District School Board declared the northern and eastern portion of their land surplus. Two school boards declared an interest in building a secondary school on the northern parcel adjacent to the residential uses. However, there were a number of concerns with citing a secondary school on the northern parcel, including traffic, accessing the site through the um, unopened Elm Road allowance, tree preservation, and compatibility with adjacent land uses. A memorandum of understanding was endorsed by Council in July 2013 that anticipates that the Town and Halton District School Board will sell the eastern portion of their lands to be developed with a new secondary school with approximately 300 to 500 secondary school students and the Halton District School Board will sell the northern parcel to the town to be retained for community uses. In the livable Oakville plan, the site is designated low density residential and parks and open space. Section 7.1.2 of the plan defines educational facilities as elementary and secondary schools as community uses which may be permitted within all land use designations of this plan with the exception of the natural area designation. The plan provides a detailed locational criteria which shall be considered when determining the location of new community uses. Uh, this is outlined in more detail in the staff report. The town's underlying zoning bylaw zones the site as public use education and public open space. The applicant proposes to rezone the northern partial to public open space and recognize the existing land use there and extend the public use education zone to the eastern parcel to permit a secondary school fronting on the McCraney Street East. A public information meeting was held on October 23, 2013 where 10 members of the public were in attendance. A complete analysis of the application will be undertaken and includes a review of the following matters which have been identified to date. Uh, conformity with applicable policy, impact and integration of the proposed development on adjoining properties, traffic impact and safety, servicing capacity, adequate provision of parking, impact on adjacent natural features, and construction impacts. Comments received at this public meeting will also be considered as part of the comprehensive review. In conclusion, Your Worship, staff put forth the following recommendation as shown for Council's consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much for the information. Council, are there any questions? Uh, Councillor Noel. Thank you, Worship. Um, I'm, I'm concerned that uh, I haven't seen a traffic study yet, and the, the report had said the traffic study was on the website, and I've been going back to the website to see if it's there, and it's not there yet. When will that be available? Uh, through you, Your Worship, uh, the traffic study is in draft form currently. It should be on the website in the next two to three weeks. Okay. Because the public report says that it's there now, so you're aware of that? Uh, I am now. Okay. Um, is, are there any preliminary comments on traffic issues that you can provide tonight? Because, I mean, I think that that's probably, um, of all the issues that we're going to deal with, I know there are some concerns with respect to the environmental impacts of, of uh, losing uh, open space, but probably the single largest um, concern expressed by members of our constituency uh, is the traffic impacts on the street. So um, I know we're not making decisions tonight, but are there any preliminary uh, comments on, on traffic issues? Uh, I know that there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, have, is there anything you can share with us this evening? Uh, through you, Your Worship, uh, staff have heard loud and clear from the public <laughs> and councillors that traffic is an issue in that area. It is being reviewed as part of the traffic impact study, which will be submitted and reviewed by staff. And. Uh, I can advise that traffic will be fully addressed as part of the forthcoming recommendation report. Is it possible to have a subsequent public meeting just to discuss traffic issues? Because that is, I mean, if the staff won't do it, perhaps it's something the councillors could sponsor, but there's, there's, that's going to be the biggest issue clearly. And, and I think that until we have a document that clearly sets out um, the, the <coughs> metrics around that, I don't think it's, I don't think we, the public can really have a clear understanding of what it's going to look like. Through your worship, uh, we can absolutely accommodate that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just want for clarification, the sale of the land has not taken place yet, correct? It's only, it's still in the memorandum of understanding phase, and I assume a sale is pending um, the legislative approvals, is that correct? 
That is correct. Okay. And there's nothing binding on the municipality to approve the application based on the memorandum of understanding? No, there is not. I'm, I'm asking questions I, I know the answers to really because I'm trying to get on the public record just to put some folks' minds at ease as well, just so you understand. Um, other than that, that's all I have this evening, Your Worship. I'm interested to see what, uh, to hear our constituents' concerns. Councillor Grant, who's been a lead on this file in our ward, is uh, unfortunately not able to be here this evening. I'm sure he's watching and uh, we'll have additional uh, feedback as well uh, subsequent to this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And I'll point out to members that uh, you've received uh, uh, two uh, written communications on your desk this evening on this matter, which I'll, I think I can accurately describe as one in favor and one against. So you have a, you have a sample of concerns, uh, and I'm sure there's others. Uh, Councillor Noel, would that be you about to move receipt of, oh wait. I yeah, let's, let's see if, if we've got any uh, friends here. Are there to members talk of the public it? with information for council on this matter? Councillor Noel moves that we receive the information we've received from the public. All those in favor? Opposed if any, that carries. Thank you, Councillor. Um, that brings us to our discussion item, and that discussion item is the Memory Care Investments uh, 105 Garden Drive uh, matter. And uh, before us is a recommendation that uh, the zoning bylaw amendment uh, be approved and that bylaw 2013-101 be passed, and that uh, in accordance with subsection 3417 of the Planning Act, Council deem that the changes to the proposed bylaw are minor and that no further public notice is required with respect to the bylaw. And uh, if you'll give your attention to the planning staff again, you'll be edified again. Good evening, Mayor Burton, members of council. This evening you'll find my staff report on page 37 of your agenda. This is an application submitted by Memory Care for an amendment to the town zoning bylaw to permit a four story special needs retirement building containing 60 units with ground floor retail and below grade parking. The statutory public meeting was held in April of this year, and the purpose of this uh, report is to provide you with a recommendation. Since the public meeting, which took place in April, uh, their uh, proposal has been revised in response to comments from the public at the public meeting and from council. The subject lands are located at the northeast corner of Lakeshore Road and Garden Drive, and is municipally known as 103 and 109 Garden Drive. The site is approximately 0 0.15 hectares in size, with 38.5 uh, meters of frontage on Lakeshore and approximately 42 meters along Garden Drive. This is uh, just a location map showing the memory care development. There's been a, a number of developments taking place in the area. We have the Grandview Living Development, which is a four-story, 33-unit building. We have the Wyndham, uh, Van Dyke Wyndham four-story building with 99 units. We have a new application that we're currently reviewing, submitted by Garden Drive Towns for 23-story townhouses, and another recent application for four townhouse units as well. In terms of the proposal, the zoning bylaw was submitted to the town in November of 2012, was deemed complete in December of 2012, and a public meeting again was held this year. The uh, proposal is for four-story, 60-unit special needs building, which would accommodate approximately 78 residents suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's. The underground parking uh, is below grade with 20 and would provide 25 parking spaces with access from Garden Drive. Commercial uses are proposed fronting on Lakeshore Road. Through the review of the application, there were three main issues identified. One was overview and privacy, one was servicing, and one was with respect to ground floor commercial uses. In terms of privacy and overview, the original Lakeshore, the original application proposed um, a four-story building with a one-story element adjacent to the Grandview Living Windermere site. The majority of the building, the second, third, and fourth floors, were set back six meters from the lot line adjacent to the Windermere site. Um, the ground floor uh, component of the building had a zero setback, similar to the neighbor. At the council meeting in April, the applicant did uh, present to council uh, proposal that showed balconies on the second, third, and fourth floors. The residents at that meeting did raise issues with respect to privacy and overlook. And following that meeting, the town staff, two ward councillors, and the applicant and the residents met to investigate options to mitigate these concerns. The plans were revised, and which um, proposed now a rooftop amenity area 
and this shows the lakeshore uh, elevation. The rooftop amenity would be uh, screened um, by a trellis type structure. The second floor uh, balcony would also be screened. It is smaller in size than originally proposed and set back. This is the elevations facing the Grandview uh, living building, the original proposal, uh, and then we have the revised proposal showing the rooftop amenity. Uh, and that is uh, the, the large wall across the top is a screening which would contain vine planting, all of which would be reviewed in detail through the site plan review process. The applicant is proposing a smaller balcony on the second floor. Again, it would be screened. A cross section between the proposed building and the neighboring building, the memory care building will actually be set down approximately one meter and the new uh, setback to the new second floor terrace is 1.5 meters where previously it was zero. A floor plan view shows the original second floor terrace is basically a common over the top of majority or half of the, the first floor with the zero setback. The revised terrace now is much smaller and it has a 1.5 meter setback. In terms of the rooftop terrace, the applicant is propo uh, proposing a landscape visual screen. Again, this would be, uh, in terms of the screening materials, would be looked at through the site plan process. The mechanicals would be located behind the screening with the rooftop amenity uh, behind the screen as well. The other issue identified through the processing of the application related to servicing. The region um, has requested that the town include a holding provision within the bylaw uh, so that the applicant would have to submit a revised functional servicing report and that the applicant agree to up upgrade any sanitary sewer along Garden Drive required to accommodate the development and that the rear yard water main be decomm decommissioned and the replacement water main constructed on Maurice Drive and that the applicant submit a letter of reliance with respect to the phase one. The other issue identified through the processing application dealt with commercial uses on the ground floor. Written correspondence has been received and is attached in, in Appendix A. Uh, the applicant, or the, sorry, the resident would like to exclude restaurants uh, in this location. However, the Livable Oakville plan does contemplate a wide range of retail uses within the Central Business District and the proposed zoning bylaw does not restrict restaurant uses in this location as it would provide an opportunity for the family members of the residents to um, uh, visit with their with their family with the, without leaving the building and at this point in time the applicant is not proposing any restaurant uses on the ground floor. The Livable Oakville plan designates the lands central business district. The lands are subject to policy 22.2.2 .2, which allows retail uses on the ground floor a maximum building height of four stories and the lands can be redeveloped provided the development block has been acquired. Staff has also evaluated the application against uh, the policies in the plan 11.1.9 and its staff's opinion that the development maintains the character of the area and conforms of the overall policy direction. The existing zoning on the site is R03, which permits single family dwellings. The applicant is proposing to rezone the land from R03 to C3R Central Business District, which would be consistent with zoning on the east and west sides of the property. Uh, the proposed zoning bylaw would define the special needs use the number of units, the height, where access will be from, uh, the flankage set bar, setback, buffer strip, um, distance, minimum parking spaces, and then would go into the personal recreational space and will identify setbacks in areas of the second floor terrace and also the rooftop terrace. The bylaw will also include the holding provision as requested by the region. Staff is satisfied that the application conforms with the overall policy direction and any relevant policy documents uh, for the following reason. A four-story mixed-use building is contemplated within the official plan. A special needs housing developments uh, specifically for residents with Alzheimer's and dementia would allow Oakville residents to age in place. The addition of 60 special needs units on this site would not adversely impact the road network. The redesign of the development was revised to address the privacy overlook issues and the proposal represents appropriate form of intensification for the site. A full circ circulation has been undertaken and there are no outstanding concerns from the uh, departments and agencies who have reviewed the application subject to the inclusion of the holding provision. The development will be subject to site plan process and such items as screening and landscaping loading areas will be reviewed as part of that process. In conclusion, staff do put forward this recommendation and I'm available to answer any questions.
Thank you very much, Lee. Uh, are there questions, Council? Councillor Duddick? I don't have any questions, but I understand there's uh, a delegation who would like to speak to the issue. Thank you, Councillor. Are there members of the public with information for Council on this file? Mr. Murray, would you <coughs> join us at the podium and introduce yourself to the clerk and share your information with Council? My name is Roger Murray. I represent the lands on the west side of Garden and the north side of Lakeshore Road. Um, I wasn't prepared to speak tonight. However, on arriving, we got our copy of the agenda. And prior to the last meeting that we were, we wrote a letter supporting the project. However, after looking at the new designs that we didn't have any, we weren't consulted on. Uh, and had no input, we do have some concerns over the new proposed rooftop terrace. And uh, so that's where our issues are because, you know, looking at the pictures are nice, but we have no idea of scale and setback and uh, as well. So I guess that's where our concern comes from on, on why is it necessary to have it located up there. And basically what's it going to look like in the end result. So, um, you, I hear two things from you. One is size and th those dimensions are given in the report, so I, I don't know how to help you more than that. Um, and the other is the appearance and that'll be at site plan. And you're familiar with the site plan process. Right. So you might bring those concerns there. Mm -hmm. And are you, are you um, satisfactorily assisted on the size question from the information here in the report? Um, I'd sort of like to know the height. Like, is it going to look like a five-story building now? Well, let's turn to our planning staff to explain that. Lee? You had a slide that showed before and are you know previous and present, and there's a there's some increase in height visible in that slide. Maybe that would assist Mr. Murray to evaluate the proposition. Oops. Is this the one you're looking for? Uh, no, I was looking for the front elevation on Lakeshore, <coughs> the before and after ones. I saw it flash by a second ago. Here, this one. Yeah. Or no, is this the side one? No, this is the side one. It's um, possibly we'd rather see the one just before this, the next one. That one, mm -hmm. yes. So I guess, no, it won't look like a five-story building, but there is this pod in the center which... Um, is akin to many mechanical areas that we've seen in other designs, but... Um, so will it be like mechanical areas adjoined with a pergola over top? Yeah, so there's a bit of screening that you might not otherwise get. You actually may be better off with this. Okay. No, no, and I appreciate that. And then the, I guess the other question would be from the garden side of the building to the to the open patio, not underneath the pergola, but the open part. What, we, what is the setback from the edge of the building okay. to that? So the one you started to show us, Lee, I think, might, you know, the rooftop floor plan. There. So if I understand my directions, down would be uh, toward you. Garden Drive is along the side. No, the left-hand side. Where the arrow is right now is our side. Okay, which, help me, because I'm disoriented then. Which side of this, where's Lakeshore? The left Lake side's Shore? garden, the bottom is Lakeshore. The right-hand side's the new Mattis building, and the towns will be at the top. So Lakeshore's at the bottom of this? Yeah. I see, so the screening um, screens Grandview, or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. and and Mr. Murray and family there to the left here. Correct. So, um, Ms. Musson, help us out. The I can make out open rooftop terrace near the 
near the garden edge of this. But screening of that, presumably, we can handle at site plan? We can look at that through the site plan process. Well, there you go. Do, do we know what square footage is on the open concept? Mm -hmm. For your worship, the zoning bylaw does um, provide a maximum area for the rooftop as being 22 square meters. Okay. So it's up to 22 meters. So what's that in feet? God help me, I couldn't <laughs> do that for you. <laughs> Neither do I. Okay. I find that you either have to stay, stay stuck in Imperial or dive into metric, but I, I, I can't go back and forth. Yeah, it depends on the age of your kids. So we'll see you. Yeah, exactly. We'll we'll see you at site plan. I think. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. Anyone else with information for council on this uh, matter? Thank you. I'll uh, look to. Uh, the, I'll restrict it to table, and I'll look to council. Councillor Demoff. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, give you a microphone. Um, I'll give you a motion to um, approve the stack, staff recommendation. Thank you very much, Councillor DeMoff. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed, if any. And that is carried. All right, that brings us to item number five, which is the heritage designation bylaw for 474 Lakeshore Road, which has been before us. Good night. And um, if we turn our attention to our heritage staff, We'll get caught up on this file. All right. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening, Your Worship and uh, members of Council. I'm here before you this evening with uh, a recommendation to pass a heritage designation bylaw for the three properties. 474 Lakeshore Road East, 86 Park Avenue, and 88 Park Avenue. And uh, just to give you a bit of background, a quick refresher, uh, you have seen these properties before. It was in October of 2012 when Council uh, voted to issue a notice of intention to designate for all three properties, and that was following a notice of intention to demolish for one of those properties that would be 474 Lakeshore Road East. Two of the three property owners objected to the notice of intention to designate and therefore the matter uh, was sent to the Conservation Review Board. Uh, the Conservation Review Board, uh, as we don't deal with them too often, uh, thankfully, they do review evidence um, uh, and they weigh it against the legislated criteria which is known as Ontario Regulation 906 and it provides a definition of what cultural heritage value is and the CRB then makes a non-biting recommendation to Council. So before I jump right into the CRB um, information, I'm just gonna take you on a, a quick visual tour of the property because it is a relatively unique configuration. Uh, the aerial view here shows all three properties outlined in yellow. So the property that fronts onto Lakeshore Road East, which is, um, this one is 474. Uh, 88 Park Avenue is the smaller parcel right here, and 86 Park Avenue is the parcel down here. Um, for your reference, the owners at 88 Park Avenue and the owners at 474 Lakeshore Road East had objected to the notice of intention to designate. The owners of 86 Park Avenue, the lower lot here, did not object to that designation. So taking you around from the uh, north side of the property, um, I've tried to insert some division lines so that you can see it a little bit clearly where the, the properties begin and end because this is a, a structure that was originally built as one house. So uh, in the slide we've got the north elevation of Lakeshore Road East but you can also see part of 86 Park Avenue in this photo. Uh, swinging around to the west, uh, this shows uh, a relatively uh, modern addition uh, to the historic portion of 474 Lakeshore Road East. Uh, this is the garage, uh, which we believe is contemporary to the 1920s um, on the property at 474 Lakeshore Road East. And then swinging around to the south, this is the portion of 474 Lakeshore Road East that you can see from the backyard of 86 Park Avenue. Um, moving across to 86 Park Avenue and around to that front, which is the east elevation. So this is, these are the portions of the property that front onto Park. 
Um, so in this uh, photo, you can see the main portion of 86 and the, um, moving around to uh, the main portion of 88 Park Avenue. And that would be the north elevation of 88 Park. So hopefully I haven't uh, muddled things up too much for you and you, you do recall uh, the uh, configuration of the property from our discussion last October. To uh, give you a brief summary, the CRB hearing took place on July 29th following several months of uh, pre-hearing conference calls and meetings with the objectors and with members of the CRB. Um, uh, the objector from 88 Park Avenue participated in the hearing, uh, but I think uh, we do need to note that the objector from 474 Lakeshore Road East did not participate in the Conservation Review Board hearing. He withdrew from that on uh, Friday, July 26th, um, without withdrawing his objection to the designation. And so we proceeded uh, with the Conservation Review Board hearing in his absence. On September 17th, the Conservation Review Board issued its report, which essentially states that uh, they support um, the town's submission that the properties have cultural heritage value and are therefore worthy of heritage designation. That's my paraphrasing. Uh, they did provide some recommendations um, and suggested revisions on how to improve and clarify uh, any uh, designation bylaw for the property. And so I've, I've given you a summary here of some of the revisions that they've suggested that we make to the Statement of Cultural Heritage Value, as well as uh, changes to the heritage attributes, which are the listings that we provide of individual features on each property. And so staff have taken the, um, that uh, recommendation from the Conservation Review Board very seriously. Um, and our responses to uh, the, re the report, uh, we did take them up on uh, almost everything that they had suggested. The one thing that I would call to your attention is under the revisions to the heritage attributes, the section that I have italicized, um, the Conservation Review Board had suggested that we look into including cultural heritage landscape features um, as heritage attributes for these properties. However, staff felt that due to the significant changes in the surrounding landscape and the lack of evidence as to what landscape features may have been original to the 1920s and 1940s portions of these buildings, um, it was not appropriate to include any of those features. But everything else that the Conservation Review Board suggested, we did follow. And therefore, uh, we're here with you uh, this evening to uh, recommend that you pass bylaw 2013-093 to designate these three properties. Alrighty, thank you very much. Uh, council, any questions of staff? Madam Clerk, uh, we have, Council, we have received a written submission which you have on your desks. And uh, I will ask if there, do we have a registered delegation on this? Are there members of the public uh, with additional information for council on this file? I'll ask twice, three times. I'll confine it to table. Councillor Doug. Um, I would be pleased to give you a motion to approve um, the designation. And I'd also like to, um, on behalf of Councillor Giddings and myself, um, express our Thanks to Susan for exceptional work, as she mentioned. Um, very difficult to try to take something as complicated as this and to compile it in such a way to understand how things evolved over time. But uh, very, very pleased with the work that was done on this and it's enabled us to get to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Ms. Shepherd, and all your colleagues. Uh, if there's no other discussion, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that does carry. Uh, Council, that uh, brings us to the advisory committee minutes. The Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee uh, recommendation before you. Uh, Councillor Giddings or Councillor, Councillor Giddings? Councillor Giddings is moving the recommendation in the agenda to you, ladies and gentlemen. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that carries. Um, if I could have a motion to rise and report, Councillor Lapworth, thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. I rise and report that Council has met and made decisions on consent item one, public hearing items two and three, discussion items four and five, and advisory committee minutes 
and recommendation as noted by the clerk. And uh, if I could have a mover and seconder for this report. Councillor Johnston, thank you. Councillor Knoll, thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That carries. You all got busy on something all of a sudden there. Um, all right, I need now uh, to ask if we have any new business of an emergency congratulatory or condolence nature. Um, I, will, um, I will take this opportunity to, to say that uh, uh, I enjoyed uh, uh, being invited to the regional municipality of Halifax last week to advise them on our experience and success with creating uh, municipal green belts at the town and regional level and uh, uh, as well uh, our experience uh, uh, with uh, the, uh, the uh, provincial green belt and um, I can report that uh, uh, the mayor and the deputy mayor and the council and many of the public attended a, a talk on the subject uh, and uh, at the end of it, the, the mayor told the, uh, the crowd that he, was in, that he was in support of a green belt, and it appears that the Halifax Regional Municipality, uh, which is in the middle of a five-year review of their official plan, is uh, at the very least going to include in their new official plan a policy that will call for the creation of a green belt, which I think is as much as you can do in an official plan anyway. So... Uh, uh, the Greenbelt idea is, is spreading, and uh, you know, uh, the little Greenbelt in North Oakville uh, pretty much uh, started. I mean, that was the that predates the the, re the province's Greenbelt by a couple of years. So, um, if you'll permit me the the pride, I'll say uh, we we made the little Greenbelt that could because it's spread. So, uh, and that's our natural heritage system, as we call it. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to express the condolence of council and our great sympathy to the uh, Philippines in the wake of the tragic uh, uh, event of the uh, typhoon. And uh, I was, uh, I noted in today's uh, press that the death toll has been reduced downward significantly and uh, it's still a horrific loss of life, but uh, it's a quarter as horrific as it was yesterday in terms of the estimate. And I know we have a very large uh, and uh, vital uh, community of Filipino-related uh, uh, residents, and uh, our hearts and our sympathies go out to them and their loved ones. Um, I will now look for a mover and seconder for the bylaws, Councillor Robinson and Councillor Duddick. Um, this is authority for bylaw 2013-93 and 101 and 124, the confirmatory bylaw. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. The bylaws carry. That completes our agenda. Thank you for your time and attention. It's been great working with you, and we are adjourned.